Hi everyone, I hope you are all keeping safe at home, that you're having a nice time with your family, getting lots of learnings on, but also having lots of fun. We are going to do a science lesson today. We're going to start our summer topic for science, which is evolution and inheritance. Now, evolution and inheritance comes under the strand of biology, and it's classified as living things and their habitats. So we're going to be learning all about evolution and inheritance. Now, when we start a topic, we always start by doing the quiz to see what we've known before and what we will we'll learn by the end of the topic. So, the quiz has been put on Seesaw this morning. If you haven't already done it, please stop watching this video, go and do that now and come back and watch this video when you have done the quiz. So go do that now and come back when you're finished. If you have already completed the quiz, then we're ready to get started. So what is evolution and inheritance? Evolution is the process by which animals or living things change over a long period of time and sometimes that can be over millions of years. Inheritance is the process of passing features from parents to offspring or to children. So it's where animals pass down features through generation to generation. So for example, eye colour. So you will have got your eye colour from one or both of your parents and they will have got their eye colour from one or both of their parents and so on and it just keeps going back. So inheritance are the features that you get from one or both of your parents. So when we think about evolution, how do we actually know that evolution is happening? Can anyone think about how we actually know these things? How scientists know that animals have changed over millions of years? Because obviously, nobody is that old. So nobody is old enough to see the changes that happen with evolution. So how do we know that things have actually evolved and that they have changed? Can anyone think of how we know that? The answer, of course, is through something called fossils. Fossils are remains or traces of animals that lived millions of years ago. So it's what's left and those are the things that archaeologists and paleontologists and other scientists use to determine just how much a species has evolved, just how much they've changed from millions of years ago to now. So like I said, fossils can give scientists an idea of what animals were like millions of years ago. So that's from what they looked like to how they lived, different things, their diet and things like that. So fossils can actually tell scientists a lot. There are people in the world who actually go around and they search for fossils, they investigate them, they see what they can find, they dig them up and they actually see what information they can find out about animals over thousands and maybe even millions of years. These people are called fossil hunters and one of the most famous fossil hunters of all time was a lady called Mary Anning. Mary Anning, I'm not going to tell you too much about her, but she discovered many really important fossils along the Jurassic coast and she found out lots of information about these animals from millions of years ago. So, here is a task for you classics. I haven't really given you much information. I told you what the topic is. so. We kind of get a gist of what we're going to be learning about. We, we don't know anything, but we don't know anything specific quite yet. I have introduced you to a lady called Mary Anning, and that is where we are going to start our science investigation. So what I would like you to do for your task now is to go and do a little bit of research on Mary Anning. You could use any books that you might have at home. You could have some encyclopedias. You could use the internet. Whatever you can get your hands on, you can speak to family members and see if they know anything about Mary Anning. What I would like you to do is to complete some research in Mary Anning and find out as much as you can about her. So I would like to know things like her life, so maybe where she was born, where she grew up, her family, was she married, did she have any children, did she have any brothers and sisters, things like that. So something about her life and about her work. So what did she do? I've already told you that she was a fossil hunter. I've told you that she's discovered many important fossils along the Jurassic coast. But what were those fossils? What can you find out? Exactly what did she find? Where did she find them? And what did that help her to do? What did her discoveries lead to? So do some research on Mary Anning. Of course, you can use search engines. You can use things like Google. You can use Kiddle and Kid Rex and you know that I definitely recommend that you use Kiddle and Kid Rex over Google because they are specifically designed for children to use. They will give you appropriate searches, appropriate 
responses to your searches that you can use for your research. Then what I would like you to do when you've gathered up all your information is I would like you to present your information in whatever way you want. So it could be that you make a list of facts that you've learned about Mary Anning. It could be that you do a fact file. Maybe you'd like to take all of those facts and put them into different paragraphs with subheadings and use all of those skills that we use in English to tell me something about Mary Anning. Alternatively, you can make a poster. So you could get all those facts, you could draw some pictures, put them on paper and let me see your poster. You could also do a PowerPoint presentation or a presentation you can make a video yourself and upload it to Seesaw. No matter what you choose to do, whether it's a poster, a fact file, anything like that, can you please take a picture of it or upload it to Seesaw so that we can see what you have done. Can't wait to see what you choose to do. Can't wait to see all the lovely creations that you come up with. The only thing that's left to do after you do that is to get the Knowledge Organiser, which was also uploaded this morning. The Knowledge Organiser, as you know, is a great document when we start a topic. So you've got some key vocabulary, you've got some key dates, you've also just got some general quick facts that you can look through, um, and you can even tick them off as we go through them throughout the lessons. So please go down and have a look at that if you haven't already. And have a lovely day. I will see you all in the next video for our next science lesson. See you later.